Hey guys, it's Jalen and I'm here today with another writing video. So in today's video, I'm going to be going through some tips for how to condense the word count of your novel and telling you how I cut 16,000 words from my book. Recently I did an editing pass on a book and I cut it down from 97,000 words to 81,000 words. I didn't think that it was possible. I thought that this book was fully edited. I didn't really think there was much more whittling down that could be done, but when I started editing it with this mindset, with the mindset to condense, I was able to identify a lot of stuff that I was able to cut in. So today I'm just going to be giving you the, the tea and telling you basically the seven ways that I cut my book from 97,000 to 81,000. I'll tell you right now the tip that I didn't follow, which was kill your darlings. Looking at my book and asking myself, what should I cut? I didn't say, well, I should cut the stuff that I like. I started by looking for the stuff that I didn't like. There's nothing that I was really sad to see go. There are three main ways that you can condense word count if your book is too long by cutting whole developmental sections, so cutting whole chapters, whole scenes, or whole like plot lines or whatnot. The first level would be condensing the plot. The second level would be condensing the scene, so cutting paragraphs or you know beats from scenes. And then the third level would be condensing the line, so cutting words. I personally made changes on all three levels, so I'm just going to start from biggest to smallest. Okay, there's just one thing that I feel is very important that I need to add that I didn't mention, and it's that everything I'm talking about in this video is about a book that was in a very late stage. When I was doing these revisions and doing these cuts, this was literally the 11th and 12th draft of the book. So I had already been editing this book for years. I had already queried the book and gotten an agent and done an initial round of editing with my agent. When I was doing earlier rounds of edits, I cut a lot of stuff. It's almost funny and almost hard for me to wrap my mind around how much stuff has been both added and cut. I have probably written 30 thousand words. Well, no, more than that because I literally cut 16,000. There are probably 40,000 words that I wrote for this book that have been cut throughout the process and that's fine. That's what kind of revising is. It's this weird push and pull where you add stuff and you cut stuff and eventually you get a finished book. So there were obviously way more obvious things that were cut in earlier drafts, but this was draft 11 and so at this point I was really doing a draft the sole purpose was to whittle down. There are probably more obvious ways to pinpoint things that don't contribute, but it's also a bit more intuitive and obvious. It's like you finish the book and you're like, okay, yeah, that doesn't need to be there. That ob That's obvious. The things I'm talking about in this video are how I trimmed the word count down of a book that was in a very, very late stage of development, not like the first round of developmental edits. You are going to probably do a lot of cuts at that stage, but it's probably more obvious stuff. So anyways, I just wanted to throw that out there. If you feel like I'm touching on kind of weird niche ways of trimming your word count, that's because I was literally on draft 11. If you're on draft two, it's going to be a lot more straightforward. So step number one, the first thing that I did was I simplified the path between major events. I looked for places where the pathway between events so the way that we get from a key event to another key event, I looked for places where that path could be condensed or simplified. Personally, my philosophy on plot is that I actually like to keep the plot development as simple as possible. And through revision, I like to simplify, simplify, simplify rather than complicate because I think simpler plot allows for more room for character. Your characters often shine and pop more when you can actually simplify the plot development. I don't like convoluted plot development. So I'd already done a lot of work in previous drafts to simplify chains of events, but I just looked for any place where the series of smaller events connecting to larger events could be simplified. A couple places through my book where I was able to condense two chapters into one because rather than it taking two full chapters to connect the two events, I was able to condense it into just one chapter. Is just look for smaller sections of the book where the road between A to B is a little too convoluted. The second thing I looked for was to remove mini arcs that didn't contribute. So I consider a mini arc, you know, a little mini series of events that is woven through a section of a novel. And you're gonna have a ton of these, right? Novels are made up of tons of interlinking little mini arcs of different events and many of them overlap and like happen concurrently. There were a few points where I noticed that I had a little mini arc that just didn't need to be there. There was one in particular that I guess I'll just describe because it's gone now. So when I was reading my book over, there was one specific scene that took place at a quarry, where in the scene, the main character and her sister go to this quarry because the main character is trying to sell cider that she's brewed to earn some money. That was always my least favorite scene. So when I was thinking, okay, I have to cut the book, I actually went there immediately. 
And I was like, okay, but to cut this scene, I actually can cut this whole mini arc about the protagonist brewing and selling cider because that required a lot of steps. There was just a lot of context woven throughout scenes, spanning over a series of about two chapters, and all of that could go. And so by removing that mini arc, that chapter was able to condense a lot because all of the context and the setup was gone. So just looking for places where there was a mini arc that was just unneeded, where something could just be really simplified or removed, right? Like little things that are set up and they have a little development, but ultimately it doesn't matter. A lot of the time these things are woven within scenes and they also kind of have places where they stand on their own and you can just kind of like pull that arc out and simplify the chain of events. And third, I also just removed any scenes that I felt merely served to develop a tangential idea. So as I was doing many drafts of my book, a lot of ideas came up that I wanted to explore. And a lot of the time these ideas really added to the story and I'm really glad that I further explored those things. But there were also ideas that I developed throughout revising the book. Now that the book was done, I kind of could look at and go, that just is very tangential to what I'm trying to say and accomplish and it doesn't really need to be there. Any scenes that were really only there to develop an idea that was kind of just tangential to the story but wasn't actually adding depth to the main themes or topics or ideas or character arcs. So now just going on to things that I did on the scene level, this is actually where probably the majority of the word count cutting for me happened was actually scene and line edits. I only did a few larger plot edits and so most of that 16,000 words for me was actually condensing on the scene level. So the first thing I looked for, non sequitur paragraphs. This is kind of like the minier version of the point before. Anytime I got to a paragraph that I felt was just a non sequitur, like it developed an idea, but it was ultimately a tangent and removing it doesn't actually remove any complexity of the story. I personally like stories that are quite idealistically complex and that have room for tangents. But anytime I got to a paragraph where I was like, this is a tangent, but it just ultimately feels like a non sequitur and the book will not be lacking any complexity without it. You know, these were paragraphs that I clearly had written because they were maybe interesting and I wanted to skirt aside and talk about this idea. It didn't need to be present in the overall arc of the scene and because it didn't really need to be there, it also wasn't really contributing to the depth either. Five would be removing action beats or actions that don't contribute to the choreo of the scene. This was huge for me. So when I was doing this last round of editing, it had been like almost a year since I'd read the book. And what happens when you do multiple drafts of a book in a short condensed period of time is uh, you basically start to memorize it. And so in the past, when I was doing multiple rounds of the book and really polishing it, what I thought was like the final polish, there were a lot of lines that were there because I could envision the scene so clearly in my mind. And so I was like, well, this has to be there, right? Cause it's part of what I'm envisioning. But coming back to the book a year later, I felt like I was envisioning a lot of these scenes for the first time. So I would get to lines where I was like, why is this there? Like a line where it would just say that like my protagonist opened the door or took three steps forward and then stopped. These were clearly things that I was envisioning really clearly and that's why I put them in. But reading it again with so much distance from the book, I was like, why is this there? Because it's not contributing to my ability to envision the scene. Any like action beat that just wasn't contributing to my ability to envision the scene, I cut and I was able to cut a lot of words and condense a lot of scenes by doing that. Is I condense dialogue. Years ago, a friend of mine who is a playwriting major told me her secret to writing dialogue. And I was like, queen, you're a genius. The thing that she said was when you're writing dialogue, for every three lines of dialogue you write on the first draft, you usually only need one. A lot of the time exchanges will have unnecessary back and forth between characters that reiterate lines or, you know, provide a lead into the next line that are not needed. I don't have an example on hand, but I'll go through my book and find one. I just didn't have time to do it before filming this video. So I will cut to an example. Any point where my characters were talking and I felt like there were, you know, say there were, we had four lines of dialogue, but the middle two, weren't really needed, I could just go directly from one to four. Okay, so I just looked for some places where I had done this type of condensing work. So this first scene was initially about 220 words and the revised version is just 130. So it's a very brief section of the book, but obviously those little edits really, really add up by just cutting 300 words per chapter. You know, I have, I think 22 chapters, so almost 7,000 words there. Little edits like this cumulatively make a massive difference. And I think that really has a positive impact on the pace. So this was the initial version from the version of the book that was like 97K. I knocked on the Harrison's doorway. Augie's daughter, Kimberly answered. She was older than me, but still a teenager. A, re a reedy figured sweater girl wearing a faux pearl buttoned gloves under a slim cardigan. A pin curl unraveled from her temple. Is your father still alive? I said. 
I'm sorry, Kimberly shook her head like she didn't know me. We'd spoken a few times. Teresa had made several dresses for her, and she'd stood in our living room with Teresa pinning fabric across her shoulders, using a tape measure around her hips. She took a step backwards and went to close the door. No, wait. I reached for the door and she stopped. Please, I brought medicine. I heard he was sick. I think I can help him. She looked over her shoulder into the dark recess of her home. I don't think that's a good idea, she whispered. Just get your mother. Her mother, Lorraine, had the same demure sensibility as Kimberly. I can't let you in. I'm sorry. Is he okay? She sniffled and looked behind her again. If you don't go now, I'm going to have to tell my parents you were here. I want you to get them. They know, she leaned in a little, about Roger. She shut the door and the deadbolt jutted with a dull ring. So that was the initial version. So this is the revised version of the same scene and it's basically the same dialogue, the same purpose is accomplished, but it's about a hundred words shorter. So about a third of the scene cut here. I knocked on the Harrison's door. Augie's daughter, Kimberly, answered. She was older than me, but still a teenager, a reedy figured girl wearing a slim cardigan. A single pin curl unraveled from her temple. Is your father still alive? I said. I'm sorry, Kimberly shook her head like she didn't know me. Teresa had made several dresses for her and she'd stood in our living room while Teresa pinned fabric across her shoulders and used a tape measure around her hips. She took a step backwards and went to close the door. Wait, I reached for the door and she stopped. I brought medicine. I can help him. I don't think that's a good idea. Is he okay? We know about Roger. She shut the door. The devil rang after it. So there's condensing here in the dialogue. You know, in the initial scene, there was a bit more back and forth. They had a longer exchange, you know, with Kimberly saying, I'll get my parents. When ultimately that just didn't really contribute to the effect of the scene. Like what's important in this scene is very simple. It's a very brief scene with a character who is a very minor character in the story. Kimberly is not an important character. She's like extremely minor. So all that's really important in this scene is that the main character knocks on the door, says, I want to give your dad some medicine and Kimberly says no and says why. That's all that needs to be accomplished. So they had a bit more jousting in the initial, but it just honestly wasn't necessary. And as you can see, there was a bit of, you know, description trimmed. Like the description of Kimberly was a little longer. When I read the newer version, I don't feel like it's missing anything. I feel like it's essentially exactly the same scene. It's just significantly briefer and the effect is really the same. There was that exchange later where Kimberly said, I'll go get my parents. And Sybil says, well, I want you to do that. That just wasn't necessary to the point that by removing it, I don't think you're really missing anything. So that's the kind of editing, things that just feel repeated. The point that Kimberly is, doesn't want her there, like that's already been reiterated. And so that exchange was just reiterating what we already know about the characters, which is that Sybil wants to get into the house and Kimberly wants her to leave, right? That was basically just reiterating what we already knew. They just don't need to be there. Anytime where I had a dialogue tag and an action beat, I cut the dialogue tag. So right here, let's just imagine that initially this had said, wait, I said, I reached for the door and she stopped. Well, you don't need both. And so that's another thing where again, it's just two words, but you cut that throughout the book every time that you have an action beat and a dialogue tag. I think this is why in the end, I don't feel like I'm missing anything. Like I feel like this draft, which is significantly shorter, feels like it's lacking nothing to me. Like there's nothing that I'm like, oh, I wish I had been able to leave that in. And I think it's because most of what I cut was extremely small and it was looking for the stuff that doesn't need to be there anyways. So of course in the end you're not going to miss it because it's the stuff that didn't need to be there. The next thing that I did was just try to pick the strongest of multiple descriptive sentences. I can get very into description and write very long amounts of description and again back when I was working on the book very intensely and doing many many drafts I obviously had attachment to a lot of these lines but coming back to the book with like a year of distance I noticed a lot of places where there would be like multiple lines of dial, multiple lines of description and I really only needed one to create a strong image and so I just cut the rest. And so when I had these long blocks of description, I would try and whittle like three sentences into just one by just picking the strongest of those images. And I think that it also makes that one line pop even more anyway. So that also was a way that I condensed a lot just because I did have a lot of description. And then the final thing um, is just line edited very, very thoroughly. This is something that honestly just comes from practice. The more you practice line editing, the more you will immediately and intuitively without having to think about it, pick up on ways to rearrange sentences or words that can be cut. That's something that I think really just comes from practice. And I had done a lot of this previously. Like I had already done multiple rounds of line edits. Looking at it again with so much distance, like a year of distance from the manuscript and also just having the mindset, like my mindset was really I need to cut words. I need to condense this book because it's too long. I don't know the exact number of what was line edits versus what was plot development, but I was able to really condense the story just through line edits. So those are the eight ways that I cut 16,000 words for my novel. Um, and I can tell you that I didn't think that it could be done. You had told me when, before I started the draft, you're gonna be able to cut 16,000 words. I would have said, that's not possible. That can't be done. This book is already, like it's long, but the book spans 10 years. It's a long story. 
There's no way that I could cut 16,000 words. I've done so much editing, but it's possible. These were really the, the trends that I noticed as I worked through the book of things that I continually were able to implement to whittle down the word count. So that's all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye.